The most important thing for this is just a new sprite that you might want to make. So I've added in a couple that I've already made. So for example, I have a bed here. Just a very simple bed, just two colors, just white and that same lighter dark purple color. And the important thing here is going back to our collision masks. So let's open the collision mask menu to show it up. You see here, I have it set up to where the collision mask ends up here. So that way the player can walk into it. You can think of it like this. If we take this collision mask and this is the top of the bed, we just need to move it down to the bottom of the bed. And that means that our player will stop whenever they actually hit the edge of the bed and they can walk behind it a little bit. So just make anything you want to. Again, you can copy this if you want. And if you want to make like a, a TV or the coat rack, I don't know why I, I'm thinking of coat rack, rack so much. But the point being, we're done now with this. So let's exit out and we are going to make a new object. So let's right click or just right click here create object wherever that is and we're gonna set its sprite to whatever sprite we just made so I'll just call this object bed and this is what we're gonna do with this so the bed needs to be treated like a wall so in order for our game to check the bed the same way it would check the wall is we can make our bed uh, a child of the wall. So if we hit parent here, we can select a parent for this object that we're making right now. Open up our other objects and we will say object wall is the parent. So anytime the game references an object wall, such as in our player here, whenever it actually checks for an object wall, it will check everything that is also a child of it. Pay no mind to all of these not being colored anymore. I, I, I don't even know why this is happening. So, now that we know how parents and children work in terms of Game Maker, this will work out totally perfectly. So, if we go back to our room... I'm going to close our bed sprite here. We can go back to our room, back into our instances, and let's put our bed, I suppose... I chose a dumb object to use, so let's just put our bed right in the center of this living room. Okay, so I've run my game, and you can see that we can run into the bed, all that stuff. We can walk behind it, but if we walk down here, the bed shows up above us. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. First, let's open our player object again, and at the bottom here, Let's add a line of code and we'll call this depth. And all this code is gonna be is depth equals negative B box, B box, B box bottom. So B box bottom, this would be bounding box, which is your collision mask. The, the bottom of your collision mask would be bounding box bottom. So we're taking whatever that value is, which will change as you move up and down, and we are making it negative. The reason we do this is in Game Maker, depth determines what order things are drawn. So what is drawn on top of what else? And it's ordered to where the lower the number, the more on top it is drawn of other things. So it basically means if we are going down on the screen, our Y value, and therefore our bounding box bottom value, because as our Y value moves, our collision mask moves, which is the bounding box. As that number increases, if we make it negative, then we're going lower and lower in terms of depth. So any object that we want to have depth, we can add this code to as long as we make sure our collision masks are fine. Now in the player, we're doing this in the step event because the player's Y coordinate can change. The player can move up and down, so therefore this, this value will constantly be changing. However, in objects that don't move, such as our bed, we can just, we only have to set this one time in our create event. It does not have to run every single frame of the game because this value will never ever change. It will always be in the same place. Okay, so now, like before, we can still walk behind our bed 
And now we can walk in front also. There's a ton of different ways to do this kind of like depth sorting. And this is just by far the easiest way to do it. So that's why we do it this way. So really quick, here's another little sprite that I have. This is just a, a big dresser. And this is a cool little trick that you can do. So you can see both of these two frames uh, are different. But what I've done is I have set the animation speed of this to zero. So if you were to play this animation, it doesn't change whatever frame is on. So really quick, let's make this an object and I'll show you something. I'm gonna make object dresser, set my sprite, remember to set our wall object as the parent, go into our create event so we can set its depth. Now we're back in our room, go to my instance layer, select my new dresser object, I want to put it against the wall. I'm going to cover this this painting. This uh painting of my my step pappy. I don't I don't want to see him anymore. So I've placed this and now if we were to run the game, it would be this TV. But what you can do is if you double click on this object and open up this menu, you can actually change down here things like the image speed and what frame is being displayed. So, because this doesn't animate at all, whatever frame we set it to is the frame that it's going to load as. So, I could have this be the dresser or this one. And this way you're not making a bunch of different sprite assets and you don't have to make a bunch of different objects and all that stuff. You can just do it with one if you know it's going to have the same little collision mask right here. So pretty cool. All right, I livened the place up a little bit. I made one more little drawer thing and I scooted things around. The feng shui is pretty good here. I think I could call this place home. If it had a bedroom.